All right, so you had to do a two weeks worth of The Observer, which went out yesterday morning. Yeah. And uh, the the one of the stories that, that I think probably was most intriguing to to uh, a lot of people based on what I saw was uh, was aggregated was this well, can idea. I, uh, of... can, I, can, I, can, I, can I I know I know where you're going, but okay, uh, go ahead. I you know, it's so funny because, you know, I'm so careful with what I write. I'm so ridiculously careful and I'm so careful with how I speak and it always gets misinterpreted. And um, somehow me saying pie in the sky scenario which is what this is the, yeah. the which is the dwayne johnson winning the royal rumble story and then going to wrestlemania and facing roman reigns and to me it's like and people got so mad and it's like okay here's the deal it's a pie in the sky scenario okay now i have to break this down well pie in the sky means if you could wish for something that's what you would do of course it's talked about anyone with a brain thinking about what would be knowing that the hopeful destination is Roman Reigns and The Rock. It's right. like, get, why, why don't we make it even bigger by having him win the Rumble and get all that publicity? He's the freaking biggest, you know, one of the biggest movie stars in the world, one of the biggest personalities in the world. Of course you would do it. Now, and then I'm, in, you know, with people's like, you're giving away a spoiler. And it's like, it's a pie in the sky scenario. If you didn't think of it yourself, it's not like I didn't think of it. It's not like people in WWE that I talk to don't discuss it openly. Of course, if Paul Levesque could pick, I'm going to what I'm going to do. If he didn't come up, if this was not his idea, <laughs> then he's not thinking. And I know he's thinking. Now, is it going to happen? It's 100 percent up to The Rock if he wants to do it, if he thinks it's the, if, he, if he wants to do an appearance to build it or if he thinks that the best thing to do is not wrestle and just do the match with Roman or if he can't even do the match with Roman, because that's, you know, again, everything is up to Dwayne. Yeah. And and Dwayne will do what he has the time to do, what he feels the best about doing and what he feels is the best thing for business for doing because he's got a head for business. Um, you know, Paul Levesque, his idea is what will maximize interest in WWE. And it's like, can you it would be can you do this? And it's like, nah, maybe I only want to do one and make it special. You know, it's like I have no indication it's going to happen past its pie in the sky best scenario and then people going like what a terrible idea they should be <laughs> elevating a new guy and it's like jesus christ do you understand business at all and it's like oh they're going back to this this is not about going back to the past you know roman reigns and the rock this is about a one-time attraction at wrestlemania that is by far the biggest thing they could do if they could pull it off and you know there's a lot of things that have to fall into play he's got a million projects he's got the xfl season starting he's got whatever other stuff, you know, and who even knows? I don't even know all of his projects, but he's got tons of them. And if he can find the time to train, and that's a key. I mean, he's not, I'm not that he's not going to train in the gym, but to train for wrestling, which is completely different. And he can do it. And he, you know, he, of course, if he wants to do it, that is what they will do. If he does not want to do it, that is not what they will do. And that's the story. The story is not, I'm giving away something. It's like, if I'm sitting here, if you're sitting here, Garrett, what would be the best? I mean, it's it's like it's a no brainer. What is the best scenario for for WWE as a company going to WrestleMania this year? You know, it's like get that thing on, you know, get the, all that publicity at the end of January, get everyone all whooped up and go with it, you know, and um, and that's your match. And, you you know, the whole thing is you're building for your big match of the year and it's the build now. Like I said, I do not expect it, but I don't rule it out either because, like, I know Dwayne loves wrestling, and you know, and it's scenario. It's the it's the correct booking scenario to maximize that match, and also, so if he is going against Roman Reigns for the championship, you don't have people complaining about. You know, I mean, it's better than going in the elimination chamber and winning the chamber. You know, what I mean, and, or, or having somebody else win the Royal Rumble. And, you know, maybe Roman is going to wrestle twice, maybe not. I don't know. You know, I mean, that's it is a scenario where somebody else could win the Rumble. Maybe they get the shot on Saturday. Maybe Rock gets, the sh you know, gets the winner on Sunday. But, you know, then you're mu you're um, muddying it because it's like um, if, you know, in theory, you're telling people either that, um, you know, that that Roman is going to win the Saturday match, sort of negating this, you know what I mean? Negating that match itself. Or you're going to tease the idea of, let's just say, Cody Rhodes just for a name and go, 
well, Rock may wrestle Cody Rhodes. Well, you know, now you're muddying the thing. It's like, well, Rock against Roman Reigns or Cody Rhodes. Then you've got to do interviews um, with both of them. And perhaps you could do it. But, but you're I also think, telegraphing, right? Well, you're not. Well, if you if you promote both, you're not telegraphing. But um, I mean, most smart. I mean, most people would figure out like what they've been trying to do for the last two years even longer than that i mean it's been it's been on the books for you know for years you know then and he wanted to do los angeles and but it's always up to him i mean it may he may not even do it for all i know i mean it's like um you know the only thing i was told is is like you know by mid-january they have to have an answer for what they're doing you know what i mean it's not mid-january yet and uh you know that that's been the hope it's been the hope for a long time they hoped for it for last year but he wanted to do los angeles not dallas which made it this year that's so. an interesting timeline, though, because when did you know about Austin last year? I don't think it was. I knew as about early Aust- as January, was it? Um, no, but that also wasn't the main event direction with you know with the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble had nothing to do with Austin. Right, right. right I right, first right. heard, I first heard about Austin on Valentine's Day because it was. I I remember that perfectly. As is, is, is I was told on Valentine's Day that that Austin was wrestling Kevin Owens, and that Cody was coming in. OK, that so that both at the same day, because I was on a Valentine's Day date while I'm texting. <laughs> and I, that's how I, w- I will always remember it at Mizu Sushi, where we went for my birthday. Uh huh. You know, I was texting, um, you know, those two things were breaking all at the same time on a Monday night, you know, where I was, uh, you know, missing raw, um, although I watched it when I got home. But th- that was the whole point of the whole situation was. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So th- those came down. So they probably came down before that. Um, I mean, in the case of Cody, um, Cody, I think, said he made the decision like February 5th that he was probably leaving. I think that was the date, but it was right around there. So it was, it was more than a week, be- more than a week before. But I think that February 14th is when it was, you know, finalized, mm-hmm. I would say, or, or close to finalized. And then with with Austin, it was never finalized that he would wrestle until the end. Um, they want, you know, they wanted him to wrestle, but it was just that he would be there and do something with Kevin and he would do, basically he would do as much as he physically felt he could. He did not want to do a one minute brawl. He could have done, it was like, I'll either do it like a five minute brawl or a seven minute brawl or, a, or if I'm up to it, I will do a match. And, you know, he felt up to it. He did a match. The match came off great. And that's what happened. So this year's WrestleMania is going to be interesting because, you know, besides possibly Dwayne, you've got Austin in there with various scenarios that you could discuss with him and um, Cena probably too. Um, I mean, that's, that would be the hope for, I know Cena was originally earmarked for Austin theory. I don't know, you know, again, that was a couple months ago and things constantly change. Um, But Austin theory is certainly getting a big push. So um, that could happen as well. And yeah, I kind of thought like, if all of the stars align for WWE this year and they get all of their pies in the sky, yeah, you could have... And you got Logan. Well, Logan Paul wants to see a match. And well, right, so they, right. So, so they may go with that one, too. Yeah. You have Austin, possibly. Rock, possibly. Cena, possibly. Logan Paul. Logan Paul, almost definitely. Whatever happens with Charlotte, like, who knows what's going on there. Yeah. Um, but if you could sort of peak all of these returns like in the next, you know, sort of that road to WrestleMania time frame. Then you could still you could still you could still make the deal with Sasha Banks too. Yeah, it's Sasha like, Banks is is like, the, like that's is not the other that's one. not it's not like they're not on speaking terms. They could come to that deal, you know, it's just a money deal at this from what I understand. And then you have this bloodline storyline that is really what when's the last time they they did a long term storyline that meant this much to the fan base? Oh, man, I don't know. I keep thinking, you know, Triple H and Dave Batista, where, you know, they wanted to blow it off on TV the next week. And Triple H was like, no, we're saving this thing for WrestleMania and um, not blow it off on TV, but start it off on TV. And then. Um, yeah, long term storyline. Um, um, I mean, they. this is this is I mean, like, you know, this is a real unique one. And it's a good one, too. But this was the blueprint in the late 80s into how they built the WrestleMania matches with Hogan. Yeah, but it was usually individually with Hogan. Yeah, the Hogan Savage, obviously, they had almost a full year build. And a lot of the other ones were maybe three months or so, yeah. But yeah. just the idea that you would have these little nuggets uh, in you know, SummerSlam and then Survivor Series and Royal Rumble, and then they would peak the angle somewhere at Royal Rumble to set up the WrestleMania match. I, I just, It just reminds me 
of of that time frame uh, and how slowly they're they're building. Well, I mean, the difference is, is you know, you don't have somebody ripping up ideas every Monday. Yeah, you know, and you're going with, you know, you have a plan and you're going with the plan as much as you can. I mean, in this case, I mean, because of the unpredictability of some of the people, you know, they could get big movie roles or something. Um, you know, there's it's like not everything can be a sure thing. Whereas, like in the '80s. You know, the only thing you had to worry about was injuries. And back then, because guys didn't get paid when they were injured, I mean, if they had a broken leg, they, you know, that which might be an, uh, uh, but if they had a, a semi serious injury, they would do the, you know, do the mania match and work through it because that's what you did back then. You know, you would eschew the surgery until after WrestleMania, you know, or something like that if the injury came, unless it was just an injury that you couldn't deal with any other, you know, but, but, you know, and then you got to rip things up and, and change it. But yeah, you know, whereas now, I mean, there's a lot of different aspects that they're worrying about, you know, and again, they didn't use outside people. I mean, Mr. T, but that was the only one. And um, as far as like in a key main event and or Trump, but that was nothing physical, um, you know, where you're really talking about the main event, the top attraction. Tyson was another one. Um, but, you know, Tyson wasn't in a position to get injured anyway. Um, so, you know, that wasn't anything that they needed to worry about. The only thing with Tyson they needed to worry about was, you um, you know, basically they had to get, I, I, you, I don't know if I've ever told you the story, but um, when they were talking about Tyson, um, you know, Tyson was suspended in Nevada, if you remember, um, you know, for biting Evander Holyfield's ear. Yep. Okay. So they went to Mark Ratner, you know, who's now works with UFC and he's a very good friend of mine. And they went to him and they said, you know, Mark, can we do this? And that, this is the power that Mark, because, because it was their suspension and Mark said, Yes, you can do it. Um, I don't know if he said you can't do a match, but you can do the refereeing thing. Um, but I, but he said you can do it. If he had said no, he's suspended and wrestling is regulated in Nevada and and all that, uh, they would not have been able to, you know, and you so so um, they had to go to him basically for his approval and Tyson as well, because if if Nevada had ruled that he violated his suspension by doing WWE then they would suspend him longer and he would not go for that because he wanted to, you know what I mean? So you had all of those, you know, you know, all of those different things that, that happened um, for that one, but they cleared it up and everything was cool. Who gets the credit for the bloodline storyline? I'm sure there are, are the a fans, bunch of people who do the fans. The fans. What I mean, about for you, the creative though? For the who who's in well, charge? Well, I mean, of... uh, but Paul Levesque. Was, okay, it's Paul Levesque. But I mean, it's like the the deal was this was not you know this this going like this. This was not a long term plan. I mean, at first it became one, um, you know, and and they agreed to it, and and um, you know Roman Reigns basically you know he's got the power to call his shots, and and this was the shot that he called. After it got over, I mean, the Sami Zayn thing was not scheduled to be a long term thing. It was just a, a short term thing. But as it got over, it was like, hey, you know, we're going to change because that's one of the things that you do in wrestling. When something organically gets over, you go with it. I mean, and most of the big things like in wrestling, I mean, Steve Austin was total organic. Vince McMahon did not have this idea of Steve Austin. He saw him as a mid card technical wrestler, wrestling heel um hulk hogan obviously 100 percent. he had that idea but steve austin was not um you know Dwayne. everybody um everybody from day one thought that Dwayne was going to be a big big deal and then there was that short period where it was kind of kind of got muddled and all that but it eventually happened um but as far as how it happened and the way they would do it that wasn't really planned in advance i uh, just you know different things happened and it fell into play but um you know, Cena, you know, we all know with Cena, you know, that, that he was on, he almost got fired. You know, I mean, he got the big push at first because that was Heyman brought him up and I, it may have been early, um, you know, but Heyman wanted to, Heyman, Heyman saw the long-term star power in Cena and brought him up when he was booking SmackDown, as I recall. And, um, you know, he got, he got him a, a push at the beginning and then Vince soured on him and then he kind of was disappearing and, and he was close to being fired um, because they just saw nothing in him. And then, you know, it turned around and he became their biggest star of the last, whatever it is, 20, 15, 20 years. So, yeah. One, one more thing on this pie in the sky situation with The Rock. I almost wouldn't want him to do anything physical at the Royal Rumble because of the idea that, you know, if he gets hurt, then that kind of screws everything up. Well, yeah, but, well, yeah. 
But I mean, there's always the risk. There's a risk reward. Now, the deal is, is that's why you don't have him in there for 20 minutes. I mean, I would not book him for in for 20 minutes either. It becomes one of those things. Now you got to figure out, do you want him to come in and just throw one guy out and win? People will think that's a shit finish. So you don't want to do that. But you also don't want him in for 20 minutes. So there's a balancing act. Yeah. You know, if and again, this is all pie in the sky if. But yeah. So, um, you know, you want it long enough to where it's not a flute that people shit on. But you don't want to risk the injury, of course, you know, Um you know, but there's look, it's wrestling. There's always going to be the risk of injury um, when you're doing any kind of a scenario. But you're right. You know, it's it's another thing to consider. The hey. WWE legendary hey, joke, joke book. book. Why do WWE superstars fingers hurt? <laughs> 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 Why were Gene Erkerlund's pants always so angry? Erkerlund? <laughs> Where does Beth Phoenix shop online? Amazon? The Glamazon! Oh, yeah. Yep. No. No. I mean, no. <laughs> no, that is the answer. Glamazon. That's what I said! <laughs> what? You said Gramazon. No, I said Glamazon. <laughs> oh, there should be a Gramazon. <laughs> yeah, Gramazon, actually. <laughs> you get, like, puppy you get it to you real slow. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.